Hi, Dave Smith here from DJS Photography. This video is another in the series of my black and white uh, workflow. It's been a little while since I posted. I mean, I did post one uh, from my holiday home during the summer, but the sound quality was awful, so I took it off. So I'm back in Brussels now, and uh, this is uh, one little area where I set up images, and this is a this is a series that I'm sort of just starting on about beauty and decay and letting these flowers uh, desiccate in this way gives them this highly structural uh, property which I feel is very good for black and white photography. So I've set up a, a, a very quick thing here, I don't claim any great artistic uh, arrangement here, I've set this up for our purposes. And I've deliberately set these in, in this sort of diagonal line along here. And what, what we want to do is to get these nicely focused. Now, in operating any camera, to be honest, uh, the focusing relies upon a, a principle called the shine fluke principle. And the shine fluke principle has two components to it. Uh, one is that if your subject plane, here's our subject, and this is the plane that we want to be in focus here. Right, so that's our subject plane in, and your lens plane that's this lens here and your image plane where the image is formed if they're all parallel then you can uh, get everything in focus uh, and that's the part of the shine fluke that 35mm cameras and most medium formats rely on unless of course you use a, a shift tilt lens in which case you can kind of get some aspect of the uh, second half of the shine fluke. The second half of the principle tells us that if you can't get those three things in parallel then what you have to do is to get them to meet at a point. It doesn't matter where that point is but you want to get them to meet at a point. Uh, and I've set the 10 by 8 up here to illustrate that and I'm going to show it with the GX680 uh, as well. Uh, and I've previously loaded videos that show the movements of those two cameras so if you want to see what the movements are, uh, you can go look at those videos uh, as well. Okay, so let's have a look at these planes then. So I've, I've set this up now. This is set up and focused so all of these three flowers are in good focus and we can get to see that structural detail of the desiccation. But let's look at the three planes. Here is, here is our subject plane coming out in this direction. Uh, I'm just going to get something to help us see that. That's a rather large envelope here. Okay. So here's our subject plane coming off in this direction. Okay. Now I've, uh, I've used the swing uh, adjustment on the lens panel. So the lens panel isn't, uh, isn't zero set. I've turned it so my lens plane is like this. It's not flat onto those flowers, giving it a little bit of swing coming out in this direction. Now you should be able to, to see that those two planes, there's my subject plane, here's my lens plane, are going to meet hereabouts. To make sure that I get maximum uh, focus, maximum depth of field, I have therefore needed to turn, to swing, the image plane as well. So I've used the back swing facility on my 10 by 8 so the plane here again isn't square on it's just turned slightly like so so it's going to come out and these three planes are all going to meet around this point here and because they meet at a point doesn't matter where the point is because they meet at a point have maximized my uh, depth of field now another way to have done this would be to set everything square uh, get the uh, the back and the film plane all squared up and parallel to each other. Presume that my focus plane was going to be here and then rely upon the depth of field to get these things uh, in focus. Now that's not always uh, possible. It's not always uh, practical to, to do that, especially if you're using a landscape. And that's really where all of these movements come into, uh, into their own. So that cam that's, uh, I've now set that camera up to take a nice sharp picture of all three of these desiccated blooms. But there is another way to think about this. 
Uh, one of the one of the big powers of using cameras like this, of having this level of flexibility, is that you can determine your plane of focus. So I could, I could, for example, rearrange all of this so that this was out of focus, this was well and truly out of focus, and my sharp focus was in here at the point of these petals, uh, and everything else would be out of focus. So I could, I could make my plane of focus coincide with this, for example. I could choose a plane of focus that went through like this, then I would turn this lens in the other direction, sorry, this panel in the other direction, and this back in the other direction, which would throw everything else out of focus. And that's a really powerful sort of selective uh, point of focus technique, uh, which isn't really available on 35mm cameras totally easily. Again, if you have the shift a tilt shift lens you can you can do that but that's a much more artistic uh, use of this I quite like the idea of having these three uh, in focus so that's one of the images I would shoot and of course whilst we can change the plane of focus like so if we use the tilt uh, property of these panels we could actually um, find a point of focus rather than the plane of focus so I could by tilting these backs and again using the shine fluke principle to to get a, a plane so I've, I've got a plane in this direction a vertical plane I could also focus on a tilted plane in this direction using the tilts of these um, panels and I choose a very small point of focus in there where the rest of that bloom was out of focus all of these blooms were out of focus you can really hone in on on the actual point of focus that you're interested in and you end up kind of twisting this thing in, uh, in all directions and it's, it takes quite some time to set up such a complicated shot but it's very satisfying to be able to have that level of control about what you're doing. Okay so I hope that that's been of some interest and some use. I'm going to show the, uh, a similar process with the uh, Fuji uh, on a subsequent video. And, uh, and, and other aspects of this, uh, this setup as well. In particular, uh, once I've shown the setup, how to set your cameras to take the picture that you want, uh, my next uh, set is to consider the exposure and, and how, we, how we find the exposure uh, for, uh, for a shot like this on this camera and on the Fuji. Thanks very much for watching. Bye now.